Hello friends and welcome back to Silverhawk Farm. My name is Bree if you're new here and today is such a lovely day. We got a lot of rain last night. It is a cloudy day all day but I don't think it's actually going to rain here and I didn't get a chance to get out to the garden yesterday to harvest anything. I'm not getting a ton of harvest this early in the season um, but we're starting to get some stuff blushing and some stuff coming in and with the amount of rain we've been getting I really need to stay on top of harvesting tomatoes before they split and before critters get to them because there's some bugs in this garden right now y'all so I'm just gonna take you around and um, the main things that I'm gonna check for are okra blushing tomatoes that I can ripen on the counter before bugs get to them and cucumbers because we've started getting a few cucumbers this week so and when I say bugs by the way I'm going to be keeping an eye out for signs of the tomato hornworm I'll pop a picture up so you can know what it is for reference and basically if you have them in your area they can decimate tomato plants very quickly a lot of people really like the moth that comes from that worm and will like basically have like a sacrificial tomato area where they allow them to live. I think that's kind of cool. I also think it's cool that I can feed them to my chickens and that's what I do. So they actually, they camouflage really well so it can be hard to find them but the things you want to look for are bare stems and they they poop real big there's a, like kind of decent sized for for a caterpillar pillar sized poop so if you see signs of those two things there's probably a hornworm really close to where you're looking they just camouflage well and one thing you can do is get a black light flashlight to actually go out at night and they'll they'll glow in the black light so that's one option i think i'm gonna probably get out sometime this week with my son and try and do that if i can stay up late enough because it gets dark real late this time of year but i'll i'll try and make a video of that if i can when it happens but i'll show you if i see any signs of hornworms or i find any other than the few that i took a picture of earlier this weekend so let's get started and i'm excited to see what we've got today This guy's pretty small. I think I'm gonna give him another day, but I could totally pick that right now if I wanted to. Oh, there's a good one. All right, we've got a we've got a lovely cucumber here. I'm trying to teach this cucumber to go up the trellis because we've got this beautiful arch trellis up here. So wish me luck with that. Thankfully, cucumbers really do like to climb. There's actually a tomato in here. That's kind of gotten taken over, but it's looking pretty healthy. So I don't think it minds the extra shade at this time of year. But look, we've got this guy all the way under here. And then I just twist cucumbers usually. I don't usually come out with clippers. This is a good size. This is a good size for the, the type of cucumber that I'm growing. I wouldn't want this to grow any bigger than this because this is a pickling cucumber. They're meant to be picked small and you don't want it to get bitter or like Sometimes they can get extra seedy and people don't like that. I love it. I love a seedy cucumber. I think the seeds are the whole point of the cucumber, so I don't relate to that, but some people don't like it, so I, I respect that. And I need to train some of these vines to go back onto the bed or they're gonna get mowed. You can see how we've got some cute little babies here. Look how sweet. And then you can see some of the flowers just starting to turn. This cooler weather is going to be really good for the cucumbers. They don't love the heat. But this one seems to be doing really well. All right, let's dig through. What else you got here for me? I'm sure that's not the only one I'm missing. Oh, this is a friend. This guy in the middle right here, I believe, is eating my pests. I'm gonna have to double check him. I'll take a take a nice photo. Oh yeah. Look at this big boy just hiding out. I should have brought my garden hot. I didn't realize I'd have this many cucumbers. I shouldn't be surprised though. Oh look at this guy. There's another big one. I need to make some salad. 
Anybody else? Try not to upset. There is something called an assassin bug. I don't think that is an assassin bug, but assassin bugs are super helpful for your garden, but they'll bite you. This is my next bed. This is my bean bed that has a single cucumber that I'm trying to train up the trellis. So let's get this one. And if you just kind of lean them up against the trellis, eventually they believe you and they actually start to stay there. So I've just got this leaned up against this trellis. I accidentally broke this tendril, sorry guy, but the rest of the tendrils will make their way up around. Look at those big, beautiful leaves. Look how big they are. They're the size of my hand. Those are good starts. We've got lots of bush beans. I'm hoping the beans aren't going to get too crowded out by the cukes. That's why I'm trying to train the cukes up instead of over. Our beans are flowering, so we should have beans here soon. And I planted those specifically for canning, so I'm really excited for those. I don't see any cucumbers here. This is the world's crankiest sunflower. I don't know why it's trying to bloom at a foot tall, but it is. I don't know why. I don't, I'm just gonna let it, it do its thing. Oh, this is a sad, sad plant. I know it looks like death, and I thought about pulling it, but it had some healthy growth up top, so I very severely pruned this whole thing. Tied it up. I'm gonna get these fruit off. And I'm hoping, actually I'm gonna get this one off too so it's not devoting any energy to fruiting. And hopefully this new growth, all the way up at the top here, will decide to survive. We got these tied up. This is one of my tallest guys. So pretty. Nice cluster of what'll be cherry tomatoes down bottom here. Those aren't quite ready yet, obviously. Not seeing hornworm damage yet. And one thing I like to do as I'm walking around is to give it a little shake. That'll help pollinate the tomatoes because tomatoes are self-pollinating. You can give them a little shake and it will pollinate the tomatoes even if you don't have pollinators. I don't really have problems with pollinators, so I do that if I'm wandering by. I don't do it all the time. And I know that I said that I single stem my tomatoes, but clearly some of them got away from me and a lot of them I'm just allowing to continue. All right, so here's a judgment call time. If you can see, this lovely yellow tomato is just starting to blush. And it's still got a little bit of green on it. I would prefer to wait until it's actually slightly hotter to harvest it because that's going to get the sugars really con concentrated. It's going to make for a sweeter tomato. I'm going to check the forecast and see if it's going to rain more because this thing looks beautiful and I really don't want it to split. And I, I did see the hornworm damage that I mentioned on just a couple plants over and those suckers can spread. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. I've also seen some eggs on the underside of my tomatoes. But this plant looks really, really healthy, so I'm not super worried about it. So I'm going to leave that one for right now. I might come back a little bit later. If it looks like we're going to have a bunch of rain in the next 24 hours, I'm just going to go ahead and harvest it because I'd rather have a tomato that was harvested and ripened on the counter, which is less than ideal than a tomato that gets eaten by worms, which is not helpful at all. That's not food. You see this beautiful borage? I am such a fan. It has such lovely flowers and it gets just covered in bees. I'm sure the only reason it's not covered in bees right now is because it's rainy. Yeah. Peppers are coming along. Some of them are getting eaten up. I don't know what's bothering to bite my peppers, but okay. And I mentioned before, this borage is really nice for pollinators, but it's also edible. So I prefer the buds. It's kind of hairy. It's kind of got a hairy texture to it. It tastes like nothing 
with just a hint of cucumber and a really odd texture. That's what it that's what it tastes like. That's the vibe. It's something that you I've seen people put like on salads. I've also seen people put it in ice cubes, which I think is super cute. But yeah, it's totally edible, which I think is cool to have flowers that are edible in your garden. I don't usually eat them. Usually during a farm tour, if I'm showing someone the garden for the first time, I'll let them try it because it's kind of a fun thing. Fun fact, you can eat this flower, you know, that, that deal. Look at this beast. I am obsessed with okra. For one, I usually don't super like okra in my cooking. I know that some people conflate Kansas with the South. Kansas is the Midwest. It's not in the South. It's not Southern. There are some similarities. We really enjoy biscuits the way Southern people enjoy biscuits. We cook like the South a little bit, but I don't cook with okra. I never have. I've had it a few times and I usually don't like it because I find it to be just a bit slimy, but I had some fresh okra the other day because I picked some off of this plant and I didn't hate it raw, which means that cooked, I'm probably gonna like it. It didn't have that really slimy taste. I think in part because I picked it when it was small. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you don't pick it when it's small. Like I said, I didn't get out here yesterday to harvest. Okra can grow really, really fast. So if you see right here, this is one fruit. And so I'm gonna pick that off. That is bigger than you want to harvest them. It's probably gonna be just a touch woody, which is fine. I'll cook it in soups. I'm not worried about it. No, I don't wanna break the plant. I should have brought my snippers for this. Okay, hold on. Twisting like it's cucumber. There we go. Look how big this is. So this is bigger than you wanna harvest okra, but they, it's one of those things that really gets away from you. So let me set this down. I'm gonna give there's a small one on here that I am actually gonna give one more day. I'm gonna have to remember to pick it tomorrow or it's gonna look like this guy. The difference between this tiny little thing versus this monster is about two days. So if you grow okra, harvest it often, but it grows really tall. It's got these big, beautiful, like star-shaped leaves and it loves heat and I get so much heat in this gar garden. I get almost too much sun. I need to probably figure out some sort of shade situation. My healthiest tomatoes are the ones that are by this tree here that I, I don't want to be here. It's not supposed to be here. I just haven't cut it down yet. And now I'm afraid to because it's helping my garden. So I've got one more okra to harvest over here on the other side. And then I think I am ready to bring my food in. That beautiful dill. Dill's coming in just in time for the cucumbers. These tomatillos are taking over. They're massive. They're so big. They're producing so much. And I have absolutely no idea when you're supposed to harvest tomatillos. So if, you, if you've grown tomatillos before and you know how to know when they're ready to harvest, please let me know. I've Googled it, but I feel like I've never found anything so decisive that I feel confident. And last time I picked one that I thought was done, it seemed really small. So yeah, comment below if you know things, cause I don't. And we are once again at my son's bed. And I'm gonna tell you a sad story about this watermelon right here. There's a beautiful watermelon. I know I call all of the things beautiful. If you garden, you understand. And I planted so many watermelon plants this year because I didn't plant any last year and I felt bad that it's my son's favorite fruit. So I planted a whole lot of watermelon and they're not producing yet, but we got a watermelon from the store over the 4th of July and discovered that my son is allergic to his favorite fruit. He got juice, I think before he hadn't gotten it like messy, but he got juice on his outside, like on his face and his arms and broke out in hives. So if you're local and you need watermelon here in about a month, hit me up because I'm going to have extra. I'll eat watermelon and I think my youngest will eat a bit, but it's not our absolute favorite thing and we're definitely not going to be able to keep up with the number of plants that I have going, which is fine. I'll donate it to the pantry if I if I need to. Um, but yeah, that's such a disappointment and I was so sad for him because he was so excited to get his own watermelon plant and plant it in his garden. So 
hopefully this grape doesn't die because it's looking kind of sad. And if the grape doesn't die, maybe we'll get some nice treats from that. All right, friends, that's it for today. I just had a real quick run out and grab some produce moment, and I thought I'd bring y'all with me because that's all the garden work I'm going to accomplish today, even though I have weeding to do and pruning to do and lots of other things. I'm going to enjoy the sleepy, lovely day and go relax some and cook some delicious food. So I will see you all soon, and thank you so much for hanging out with me today.